Hi, welcome back. It's been about two weeks since I've done a video and you wouldn't believe how far the garden's come along. So I thought I'd do another one where I mix a habitat build in with a kind of an update on the garden. Just so you, those who watch the videos all the time can see just how far it's come and it really is looking good. This one's a work in progress. This is going to a gentleman called James. And it's look, looking scrappy at the moment, but it's uh, it's coming along nicely. I've put, just put the backboard on. Most of it's recycled. But you can see here the structure's all sound. I've been doing all the joins, glued it all, prepared the bottom with the holes. There's a log going in here and more bamboo and then some nice embossing for him. I want to make it a little bit arty if I can. So I'm just gluing the back on. So yeah, that's coming on really nice. I'm pleased with that one too. It's a little bit like the last one, but just a little bit bigger. And a little bit more intricate so if I take you up the garden just have a quick have a quick scout round you can see all the erysimums here the bulls mauve is coming on as are the hebes and this sticky stuff which I never can remember the name of but it's edible and it goes everywhere and it has got flowers like you can see here little tiny flowers so it's doing some good it does stick to everything including your clothes uh, the honeysuckles doing well and the solanum is doing really well so that's honeysuckle great flower for uh, for moths and nighttime feeders and what have we got here we've got a bombus pascorum there a carder bee on um, i think this is sage possibly what else have we got here we've got a buff towel on there a little buff towel worker on the bowls mauve there the ceanothus is is come into bloom in the last couple of weeks just looking to see if anything's on it. Got some frog hopper um, larvae there. You see that bubbles, they, they make a froth and then lay their eggs in it. Loads of that all over the garden. But Ceanothus is fantastic. Creeping buttercup is out. Got some oxide daisies coming up. Oh, here we go. What have we got here? Little baby, a little baby, you don't have babies, moths. A newly emerged cinnabar moth which is, I've seen a few of, but they've, they've not fared well in the rain, but that one's just drying off. The vetch is still going strong. And you can see there some carder bees on there, Bombus Pascorum again. Oh, we've got some uh, red campion that's come up. Now I seeded that in a couple of years ago, so it's taken a couple of years to come up. The iris are all, around, all out here, which are great for bumbles. Got some black fly on this uh, eryngium, which is a planum variety. You can see the, the black fly here, but hey, good. Because there'll be something that predates those, ladybirds, etc. That's coming on. But the real star of the show is the wildlife garden up here, the newly sowed one. And bearing in mind, it's only been a couple of weeks. You wouldn't believe how far it's come. So if I'll have a little scout round there now, I'm not sure of half the names of these plants. Obviously oxide daisies and poppies and um, borage, which we've covered before, but everything's really starting to come out. And you can see the bees on there now, as along with what looks like some European tortoise bugs. I think that's what they're called. Oh, and a common blue, which I just disturbed. And they, there you go. And, oh, sorry, just my battery warning light came on. Yeah, I think that's a, a European tortoise bug. So my battery is running low, so I'll have to cut this short. But the next thing I, you see will be the finished habitat. But really, how good is this looking? What a perfect wildflower meadow. I take you up to the ponds, even the steps. I mean, there's so many unemerged flowers. There's just literally hundreds, if not thousands, that are, uh, are due to come out any second along with these which I will drop the name in I always forget what they're called the beautiful pink flower the ponds as well really coming along that one's full of mosquito larvae which is fantastic because I can already see a newt down the other end just sitting in the weed just there now I didn't put him in there so here if I creep round We'll have a look, see what he is. Yeah, it looks like a juvenile from last year. And it looks like a possibly a palmate. You can just see him 
sitting in that weed. I'll see if I can get you closer. There we go. Oh, and off he goes. So even the water milfoil, which I put in these ponds, is starting to grow on its own now. There's been a lot of rain here, torrential rain, after a week of really good sun. So it is coming, coming on the garden, and that one's full of vegetation now. It's so much so that I'm going to have to cut it back a bit. The uh, bird's foot trefoil, which is that, that plant down there, that one there, it's really spreading. I think it's bird's foot trefoil. I always get confused between that and yellow rattle. rattle. But the star of the show is most certainly the wildflower meadow, which I couldn't be more happy with. And if you haven't checked it out, go back about six months with my videos and start watching the whole series and you'll see just how much work has gone into, into building this and creating this meadow, which is one of the most successful things I've done plant-wise because I'm not a good gardener, which is probably okay because the soil that you need for these plants has to be as pretty much useless as possible. So that's worked in my favor. It's really come along and it's, it's a bit of a rank day today, overcast and yet the garden is full of bees. So I will catch up with you in a moment. Once I've done another four hours on that habitat and finished it off and I think you'll like it. And hopefully James will too. So it's seven o'clock on Saturday morning and a couple of weeks have gone by since that first video showing the habitat being built and the reason for that is I had a nightmare. I ordered loads of bamboo. I went everywhere first of all, couldn't find any bamboo with holes and then I ordered some bamboo, about a hundred pieces of eight foot. That got lost in transit and then the second lot came and that didn't have any holes despite the guy on eBay going out and apparently checking it before he sent it to make sure it did have holes. So long story short, I ended up putting the bamboo in anyway and manually drilling it, which is not something <laughs> that you should be doing. It's a bit of a workaround, but it worked perfectly. So it's all done. This has been a bit of a mammoth project. It doesn't look like much, I guess, but these things, you know, if you want them to look nice, and, and this one particularly is gonna form a feature to the gentleman's garden, and I imagine it's going to be placed somewhere where it's the first thing people will see because of the wording. Um, because of all that, it's, it's taken a long time and I'm really, really, really pleased with it. And I'll leave you with images of it now. And uh, thanks for watching. It's a really quick video, but it's just to give you a catch up really. And I wanted to share the habitat with you because I'm really pleased with it. So I'll speak soon. Thanks for watching.